by uh, Ruth Christine, she's probably left it already. So take your time and let us spread the word wide. Exactly, yeah. Oh, here we go. We made it. Welcome, everyone. See my big Shrek head as I go into the camera. Welcome. It looks like we're stable enough, or at least the camera is. I don't know about the rest of us. Okay, good. And can you hear us, Marshall? Yes, and let me turn my sound up here. Welcome. I don't know anyone's on yet, but just a minute late. Well, we're a couple minutes late. Catch up. We'll turn this off. Yes, that's the elegant music. I don't know who the artist is. I should find out maybe. We can send them ten dollars if you do a new song for us. <laughs> it's a free, uh, it's a free service, but you pay the price for having to listen to that music. Okay, welcome, welcome, Marshall. Good to see you. I don't know if if our um, friend Rosemary might dial in. We'll we'll be able to see if she pops up pops up on the screen, but. <coughs> Very good, and I'm not sure if anyone's on, but we'll see. Lillian often joins us, and people certainly catch up. Okay, so welcome. It's a beautiful day on the island. The last beautiful day for a week, it looks like, because the winds are coming. Now, Steve, are you and Joey leaving soon? Are you going to beat the storm, or are you going to get... Tomorrow. So you're going to be staying another week. Because <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you're on the ferry... <laughs> And so we have lovely accommodations upstairs in the parish has them. <laughs> fold out the fold out bed. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about um, we you know, of course we always go to Block Island too and we're not on Nantucket. We had gluttons for punishment, but the island life and so often our plans get turned upside down, as everybody does, they, you know, there they have to go for all their treatments, any tests, they go off, off island on Block Island because there's one doctor and one nurse. And it recently had a transition. How long is that. the boat ride? It's just a one hour slow boat ride. It's mm -hmm. only, I think, 11 miles mm -hmm. off the coast. And so often they put you on an ambulance instead of, um, instead of a uh, med flight. Mm -hmm. Unlike here, where you, here you're on Mass General Hospital's roof in 35 minutes. All of us just had a great experience. Yeah, I, I try to avoid my, helicopters. But. My husband was backed off twice. I know. But they won't let you in the, you have to go on your own then. They don't let you into Yes, and I asked if they no. fly you back. They don't fly you back. No. It's a, it's a one-way flight. It is. Yeah, yeah, I told you. Done. <laughs> I uh, was supposed to go off Monday. I had I won't be here next week because I have a procedure next Thursday, and I have to be COVID tested on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I went down to I, you know I had a resignation from Monday, and I went down to see what else was available. And I'm actually going off tomorrow night because they said. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse yeah. all the weekend. Oh, really? Yikes. Yeah. I'm getting off tomorrow night, then you do it Monday. And this isn't something I can miss. So, uh, you know, but that's how I would like. Yeah. Just, that's right. It's what you take when you move here. So. Yeah. It's worth it. It's certainly yeah, worth I it. I think yeah. so. And uh, the problem with Block Island is when you get to the mainland, you're in Galilee. Or isn't it Galilee? Yes, Galilee. I mean, there's so many good things to eat around there. I would want the ambulance to pull over and get me some Rhode Island chowder and some stuff that you know. <laughs> yeah, George's of Galilee. You can see it as you come in on the ferry. They have fabulous Indian pudding, which I love, which is Ooh, I maybe love not that. politically correct name anymore, but it's molasses, cornmeal. Yeah, it's good. The Native Americans taught us how to eat that one. Yes, I used so. to make it. Yeah. yeah, we still make it. Yeah, the Kenyans. I'll give a shout out to Kenyon's uh, Mills, which has been there since the 1600s, where we grind wonderful cornmeal. We use cornmeal for our banana bread, for pick, mm. you know, making pancakes, mm. all kinds of yeah, corn, mm. corn flour and cornmeal. And of course, Johnny Cakes, which is a, I like corn another bread. grinding of it. Corn bread. I love it. Yes, me too, cornbread. It's, okay, good, so welcome everybody. We um, This week for September 20th, it's the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, but it was as I always say, it seems like it's only been 10 weeks since Pentecost, but, but the 16th. And, um, and the readings this week are Philippians, like Paul's letter to the Philippians 1, 21 through 30. Our psalm is Psalm 145, verses 1 through 8. And our gospel, we continue with Matthew 
20, 1 through 16. Matthew 20, 1 through 16. It's in Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, begins. Again, it's, it's, it's already the year 5781. It feels like it's been 5750 just yesterday. It's already 5781. <laughs> I can use that joke twice in one day. Okay, so we start with the collect for this week, which is the collect closest to September 21st, which is proper 20. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. With thy spirit. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That's a nice one, huh? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I had a wonderful meeting, um, you know, a, one of my wedding meetings. All, all, most of my weddings are canceled, but they're replaced with little tiny weddings, you know, two people or six people or... One was supposed to be out in the, on the other side of the harbor on Saturday. I think we won't be going on the boat, little boat, onto the other side of the harbor on Saturday. <laughs> That's going to be moved inside church. But anyways, meeting with couples. One, um, I, uh, by meeting with wedding couples and people preparing for baptism, I get to witness a lot. You know, not, not to proselytize or talk anybody into anything, but to witness what my faith experience is for me and what what our shared experience is for us together. And you know, so many of those things overlapping. And so I had some really um, interesting meetings, certainly. And so I talked about, um, you know, that uh, it, as, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's in this prayer book or my other one, that quote from, it's in my other prayer book, from Albert Einstein, that we're, we're permanent spiritual beings and temporary physical bodies. Mm -hmm. And so I think about being among the things that are passing away. Mm -hmm including ourselves. And then also, as my, my dear scientist friend, Dr. Balea says, a brain scientist friend, that our consciousness is far beyond brain activity. He believes that our consciousness is everlasting, that we have, you know, that we will, our consciousness will be present. And so often I, I feel that, you know, loved one's consciousness is uh, close by, kind of influencing mm -hmm. me, you know? Mm -hmm. Not clinging to people, you, have let, you know, you let them go and soar freely, but also, but that consciousness, the essence of who we are is everlasting. And we're among things, including ourselves, passing away. And it seems to me the things that are heavenly, love the things that are heavenly. Again, we, we're asked to work in the, Jesus came down into the, the stuff of life, not on some pedestal, not some gilded tower, you know, the, but the messiness of life. I was going to tell my, you know, my youth group in Sunday school, you know, Jesus had poopy diapers too. You know, <laughs> he came down here in the poop and the poopiness of life, and so we're not supposed to be. Um, we, we we ourselves involved so much in that. More more and more, we as a parish are, and we as individuals. Um, but also, we hold on to justice and you know the, the knowledge of God's loving presence and this, you know knowing that God wants the best for us, not to punish us with stuff, and, but that God will walk us through this uh, virus, all the other challenges of life, and be with us to rejoice. And, and I'm well, reading a book right now in which the author talks about, I don't know whether it was a formal heresy, but if it was a school of thought in the second century, they had to admit that Jesus ate because it talked about it in the Bible. But he couldn't possibly digest. But because if he digested, then he would also poop. <laughs> he was more fully human than they were willing to deal with. And I remember going to Ravenna, and even though, you know, fully human, fully divine, it's all in my head. But when you go see those, um, you know, what is it, 7th century, 6th century um, uh, mosaics in, 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 in Ravenna, yeah. Is, is, baptizing Jesus, and Jesus has a penis, and well, of course, but you know, for the rest of the part, they hid it, and it's always behind, you know, a fold, or there's a fern there, or something like that. <laughs> there's a fern yeah, Adam. That full of humanity, <clears throat> even to somebody who believes that implicitly, it's just kind of a shock to see it in, in, in a figurative art like that. Yes, yeah, but Mark,
Marshall, I don't know if you knew that there was a book, a coffee table book that was published maybe about 30 years ago. And all, it was all, no matter who the artist was, if he had done a Madonna child where Jesus as a child was full, shown full naked. In other words, his penis was shown. That it was, okay. This book was, it was fascinating. How I many, have to close my ears. Oh, but no, but, but <laughs> Father Max was. Is the reading from the epistle today about <laughs> circumcision, perhaps? Are <laughs> <laughs> we leading into that? <laughs> but it was all done to pre to prove that Jesus was both human. That's right, and exactly. Father, which was exactly human yeah. and anyway, we are human and divine. Yeah. I, I, right. I didn't know what it was until you showed it. And people have trouble with that aspect of faith, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. But I, it, it reminds me a lot um, working with couples. Um, those are those are blessed to be couples. Oh, I have a survey. It says you know by by a faith journey together, we feel closer as a couple. And so often our young couples, because we we've, we've done everything to drive them away from church for generations. Sadly, and, um, so often so many of our churches are in denominations and faith traditions even. But uh, but they don't they don't answer yes to that. That their faith journey together makes them closer, which is sad, isn't it? Because I, I, I think it's the, it's the glue. It's uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's the glitter. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's the really glitter on, on our relationships. I love glitter. I have friends that are seriously into, into glitter. <laughs> Usually they're drag queens or. <laughs> well, also, my grandfather, who was an actress, she puts it on her hair. So glitter, yes, it was. A, yeah, it's nice. I was. I lived in New York in the. Um, early 80s, we used to put rhinestones on our, you know, now we have these scarves, you know, bandanas to put over our faces, but we'd wear them around our necks. A friend of mine had a rhinestone gun. She's in the city <laughs> ballet. So I, we had, I had rhinestones. I was like, I was a vision walking wow. down, down the street at midnight going out dancing, you know? What, what, oh, Father Max, what was her name? I went to the Susie, city ballet. Uh, oh. Susie, um, hold on, Susie uh, Friedman? I think it was Friedman. Let me think. It was an F. I know the family lived up uptown. Mm -hmm. She was in the core. Yeah. She had a couple of solo pieces when uh, yeah. as a young ballerina, but she's a majestic, like six foot tall person. So that she's probably a little too tall to be yeah. one of the superstars. Well, if almost, she's six you know? feet, then on point, she's six foot four. Exactly. And Maybe she, she was actually yeah, five. Yeah, wonderful on stage, but yeah. harder to peer. Harder hard to partner. Yeah, yeah, harder yeah. to partner. But yeah. she worked in the core. You have Susie Friedman. Yeah, I interviewed with her dad. He was in the paper business. I almost went into the paper business instead of the wine business, but I think I cho God chose well for me in the, the bread and wine business. Okay, so anyways, that's a that's a pretty good um, comic, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Comic. Yeah, like that one. Okay, good. So now we'll turn to our and. Connie, you, when we get to the psalm, maybe you could lead us in that psalm. Did I say what page that was? Probably not in the prayer book. What's, what's 801, said? I think. 801. Psalm 145. Five. We won't do that yet, but we'll prepare. 145. So you can use your book, your Bible at home. It'll be a slightly different translation. I like our translation, too, of course. That book of common prayer. 45, yeah, 1 to 8, page 801, yeah, page 801, that is such a good, okay, and so, and so maybe, um, so, so Stephen, why don't you read Philippians, and we'll have, Marshall, I'm going to have you read the gospel, I'm going to anoint you deacon today, deputize you, but we'll have uh, Stephen read our Philippians, and that is Philippians 1, I believe, right? Philippians 1, 21 through 30. Philippians 1, 21 through 30. Mm -hmm. And, uh, da -da 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 -da. Maybe I have to memorize that. My what page word. is it? 209. 209. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two, 
My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I still have this struggle. Wow. So, interesting, huh? It's interesting he said, and for he has granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him. But he feels like he still has. It's, not, it's so sad at the end. Yeah, my notes say that this is, um, you know, he talks about um, choosing <laughs> not to die. Um, seeing that everything he was going to go through with imprisonment and that he's, um, it's talking about suicide, it says in my notes. Mm. Suicide. Yeah, which of course is anathema in, in Jewish tradition, that is in, in our ethical tradition. Um, yeah. So it talks, you prefer, choose, it's a clear indication that Paul's possible death may be at his own hands, as well as the hands of his jailers. And that he chooses his life in Christ. I read a lot of background on this because it wasn't saying a lot to me. And it also, um, as you suggest, Max, it basically said, and this is the theological ground for discussion of suicide um, in, in Christianity, and it talked a lot about uh, about the, the 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 way in which suicide has been treated and so forth and so on. And but something else I read that said that he's basically he's facing death, and he's just sort of not. Is it wrong to be happy that you're going to? Death, if this means you're going to be joined with Christ, or should you stay on and fight the good fight? And I, I assume here that he's deciding he'll take he'll, it's either one is okay with him. But it's, um, you know, when you think about it, all those generations of burying people outside the churchyard and refusing to have funeral services, if this is the place where that's coming from. It does seem to me to be a very strong uh, impetus for the church to take that decision. That's for sure. Yeah. And I've, I've heard of contemporary, you know, recent services where the family was horrified by um, what the crazy person chose to say at the death of a suicide. Just yeah. horrific. I don't know so, when they started yeah. being selective. But. I've heard one good, good one. That, but yeah. I have two good friends who, whose father committed suicide for various reasons. And they'll suffer from depression their whole life. Yes, yeah, it's they're terrible. Just, they're just, they we have families, families on the island where it's, uh, it's generational suicides in their family, generational. Yeah, and that often happens. Yes, it's terrible. So, so if sad. it was the solution for one parent, then it's. Yeah. Yes, but not. Uh, yes. Uh, I know mental health, and you know, we. Our interfaith council hopes to um, have a conversation at two this afternoon, a Zoom conversation with Fairwinds Counseling Center. They have a new interim director with great background. The, the organization is very excited at his arrival. And, um, 
and then and also with Amanda, who we know well from Fairwinds, to help address the issues. Our interfaith council meeting was brought up that now during uh, we have different anxieties and um, sources of depression during the pandemic and people's isolation and and fears, and that maybe we as a council could help address that. I mean, how our, how our spiritual lives help us deal with it, and also our counselors could talk about how they in, encourage people to deal with the issues, those mental health issues now. We're just having that initial conversation today at two, but certainly that's, um, it's so horrible to, um, I've known people to take their lives and you, you just wish you could have said, oh, you know, you know that we love you. You know, hang in there. It's not, this isn't gonna be, uh, it won't be like this forever. You know, things will get better. Yeah. Uh, so I saw, I saw a wonderful, um, well, he had sad, encouraging, though, in a way, a presentation about suicide last year. For, um, you know, it was a webinar or whatever mm -hmm. about preventing suicide. And a lot of it's just asking the questions, you know. Are you okay? I feel like you're, you're really down. Is, mm -hmm. you know, it's, mm -hmm. Just to reach out. And mm -hmm. we, we don't always know what to say. We don't know what to say. But just to ask that question, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> When Here my da are. daughter was going over to Jamestown Bridge once, she saw a young man, and she said, looking over there, she knew he was contemplating. Oh, she just yes, knew it yes. In her heart, and she she got some place to park. She jumped out of her car, and she just kept talking to him, and he was contemplating. And she, so she motioned to people to call um, the police, and when a policeman came, she said. He had had this wonderful training. He knew just what to say. He yes. talked them down. He got them. Crisis intervention yes. training. Yes. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. There's a whole group of people on on the bridge, uh, of Golden Gate Bridge, the crew that that go out. You know, that are trained to help people. It's amazing. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah, a lot of it's just again, and they say too, if you can help person get by that moment of suicide, that. Very unlikely they would try a second time in their life. It does happen, but it's rare. Really? It's, 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 it's a, a set of circumstances and a very just a absolute low moment mm -hmm. in their lives. Yeah. And the opportunity come together to, right at that moment. And if, and if they don't have the gun, that's why guns at homes, mm -hmm. not to be anti-gun gun rights, but you have to lock them up mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. well if you have them. Because yeah. so, that's a, if they don't have the gun, um, it, if they, if people, attempt suicide by pills, they only have a 5% chance of dying. If they do, with, if really? they attempt with a gun, it's 90%. Yeah. yeah. I have a, not a good friend, but a friend of a friend who I know fairly well, uh, whose husband found her. She, she had written a note yes. she had taken the pills. And one of the things he told me that the note said, she said, my brain is tired. My brain is tired, yes. Just, and he didn't have a clue anyway. But she I seems know. to be okay now, but she's still you know, yes, he's yeah. just praying that she doesn't do it again. When, when I read this passage, I don't think I was thinking about suicide. No. I was thinking no, no, I, I was thinking because doesn't Paul tell us he had something like a Physical problem. Yes, epilepsy or something. Yeah, we don't yeah, know what it was. The thorn in his side. Thorn in his yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. trying to remember that. Yeah. But I was just reading these words for me: "Living is Christ and dying is gain." For I am to, if I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Mm -hmm. and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But. I, I, I mean, St. Paul was a great, great man, and I, I'm, I'm not, and, and I feel like but there are times when I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of death, yeah. and, and I ought to be more optimistic about the afterlife. I feel yeah. like See, I'm, I'm, I so feel old now. I'm sort of this. fascinated. <laughs> yeah, right. thinking about what is <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I felt like I wish I felt like this. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know the thing about epilepsy. I know this because my husband had it before he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. He fought mm -hmm. terrible. Epilepsy is horrible. And 
he he only had one grand mal seizure, but he usually had these small seizures. And he said he could always tell when it was going to happen because he had an odd smell. And then he said he knew he was going to go to this place that he didn't want to go to. Huh. And I think that, so when I, when I think about St. Paul's, I think that's what he's saying. He knows that the, it's horrible to go there. I think in this case, it's hard. The, the living is more horrible because imprisonment, anguish, ailment, and that, and dying. Um, you depart and you're with Christ. Born to it, like mm -hmm. like prayer of Saint Francis, and in dying you're born to everlasting life, you know, and and to be more fully with Christ. But yet he had work to do. Yeah. I'll, I'll look at the uh, my other. I didn't bring the book over today. My other, um, the one that Steve gave me earlier in the summer, um, my co the commentary, and that one, I'll have to see what, the, what it says about this issue, too, of this Paul's. It seems to suggest that he's preferring not to choose death, and the, and the references here is, is at his own hand. But I'm not going to make a big issue out of that. Mm -hmm. And then again, my friend Jeff, who uh, works to prevent suicide among returning troops, um, and he's quite, quite effective in it. Mm. Uh, he's been very, very good at it. Um, I have to get some advice, because I think it's worth mentioning, actually, mm -hmm. in, with everything going on in, in the world, that Paul, too, struggled with a despair, it seems, but then, but not, but because of his confidence in Christ, is that he chose to labor on, even in prison, And of course, we always, there's the noontime uh, boat whistle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Max, I have a cousin who is the newspaper reporter. And the first time he visited here, as he was leaving, I said, what did you find out about Nantucket that was a surprise? And he said, when the, when the new vessel blows for the boat, everyone on Nantucket automatically looks at his watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I just did. It's that true. is true. It's I, did, <laughs> I did do that. <laughs> I did. It's not the 12 o'clock bell or anything. Well, you want to make sure it's on time. I do at <laughs> night, too, because I hear it. I mean, <laughs> early in the morning. I'm, t I'm waiting for God to strike the uh, town bell again because I, my poor house guests too will be waking up half the night. And so maybe God's will for the wind to blow through to this <laughs> and stop that bell. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going ahead reading here, so I, I wonder why they stopped it at verse 13. 30, because the second chapter, then he says, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation. Well, they're saving that for next week, I bet. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's next week. You I can't, let's not go ahead now. Oh. Yeah, that's right. That's for the 27th. But I mean, that's looking on the bright side. Yes. Hmm. If, if there were ever a time we need to look on the bright side, it's right now. Well, next week, then we're going to have to just sit with this for a week. Though the bright side is that he's choosing life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In all its messiness. Yeah. And uh, this is this isn't his last letter, is it? Let's see. Certainly, we have we have Colossians next in the and then, but um, of course, yeah. You know, I don't know if you heard Jonathan's sermon last week. Um, I, I was fascinated. And it, there's, a, there's a, a relation to this. He talked about metanoia. And I wish you had been there because um, he was talking about us being engaged in metanoia. And I went to read about metanoia because it's been a while. And what I read said it's probably the most badly translated word in the entire Bible. That in Greek it doesn't mean anything like repentance. There's another word for repentance. That metanoia is building a new life or um, creating a change of life, going on to a new thing or so forth. And it's it's 
almost like what happens here. Paul is, would it be better just to let it all go and die? And then we, if we look ahead to chapter 2, we can say, no, it's wonderful. There's all these really good things coming up. But I was, I was just interested. To, I took that poem from the sermon because coming from that Southern tradition where you have an instant conversion like St. Paul or you haven't had any conversion at all. So not real, but the Lord just attract your soul. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was nice to, to hear about this concept of an ongoing conversion from one form of life to another that took place in time and over time. And I think if you didn't hear the sermon, you probably would have enjoyed it because you would have got, you would have done that already probably. And yeah, we were all there. It was at the uh, 9.30 service too, but Marshall was talking about the early oh. outdoor service at 8, at eight oh. o'clock. Yeah. yeah, you know, I've always used, um, from my concordance, I looked at Metanoia years ago, you know, in seminary. So over the years, I've talked about the image Metanoia, um, as he said, a change of direction, a, a change of looking at things, and you know, mm -hmm. a new direction. But also, I like the image of, um, of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Now, for some reason, when I read my concordance, yeah. it had other references, and that image kind of yeah. came to mind. Mm -hmm. Now, how about with your scholarly I'm background? Say, in the I'm just going to say, here's this is my Greek New Testament, and it has a handy dandy glossary in the back. So let's see what they give. Metanoia, repentance, change of heart, turning from one's sins, change of way. Change of way. That yeah. sounds like a cat caterpillar. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> it, maybe it would help to give the etymology of it. The meta yeah. is a preposition. It means with or after. In this sense, it kind of means after. And it, it's used in verbs of changing because if you put it, things in this order and then you put one thing after another, you've changed their order. Yes. And so no, no, noeo is from nos, nous, meaning mind, and uh, noia, I guess thought, paranoia. Will destroy but, ya. But it's as if metanoia, so this is making your thought be after the other thought. In other words, switching switching your thought around mm -hmm. is the root meaning of it. But as I say, just for, for translation help, they give repentance, change of heart, Turning from one's sins, change of way. And again, it's easy to say, I'm good. I'm good, Lord. I don't need to. <laughs> no change is necessary. My accountant says I'm good. And so I've got everything set. Well, yeah. right. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice to hear that your accountant? Right? <laughs> okay, okay. So now what do we have, Connie? We have the psalm. Yeah. And it's on page 801 of the prayer book, or if you're using your Bible, just slightly different <coughs> translation. Usually we have conjunctive to the asterisk, and then we pray the rest of the verse. And it just stops at verse 8. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's not that long, but I guess that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough for us. Mm -hmm. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King. And bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you. And, and praise, praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another. And shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty. And, and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts. And, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the rem remembrance of your great goodness. They shall, they shall sing, sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow, Slow to anger and of great kindness. To the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Nice one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah.
you know, again, um, I was reminded of my meeting, my wedding meeting, and thinking about trying to talk about God, you know, about God's wondrous acts in my life. I, I think I love that in the Jewish tradition, again, that they gather and the generations, you know, from Passover Seder, especially they'll talk about God's wondrous deeds of it. And I think maybe just like people say, well, I don't need transformation. I, um, it's easy, maybe, maybe especially in our, in our culture, because we've grown up to be, you know, supposedly independent, um, that um, we don't cherish, we think we're okay alone. We don't need God, we don't need community. Is easy. Yeah, I hear people say, I'm not a joiner. I'm not it's a joiner. That we're wow. a good yeah. thing. How about, how about no man is, I love the heresy in Rhode Island. You know, Rhode Island's the, the smallest state, and but yet it has the, the third largest su suspended marble dome in the universe at, uh, after St. Peter's Basilica and the Capitol. They had, I don't know, they were obnoxious of Rhode Islanders, and they built this giant state house with a big dome, you know, for a little state. And on top of it, they have the independent man, you know, and I remember as a young adult, they took this big statue down. And I don't know if it was gilded before, and they're regilding it, or, or just they felt maybe Buddy Sancy had an extra kick, and he, he was our next mayor of Providence, had an extra kickback or something. Mayor's and they, so they took it down and gilded it. The independent man, and he has a spear, like a loincloth kind of thing. He's like Hunter. And it's a heresy because we're not independent, we're interdependent, mm -hmm. and hopefully in a healthy way. You know, we're not, um, could not codependent, but interdependent. And that, that's natural for us. And I think something, you know, people that, that they say, well, we're, I'm spiritual, but I'm, I don't believe in organized religion. Yeah, I always say, well, not yeah, but I said, well, we're not, we're not an organized religion, so you'd love us. Especially <laughs> say, especially our parish. <laughs> that was going to accuse us of being organized. And um, luckily, Ali's organized, my wife, Ali, so I get, I get by. Um, but yeah, um, to miss that community, to miss that what we call fellowship. But to I, I, I read a wonderful. Uh, I, I maybe mentioned the Nantucket Project, which I never could get tickets to, or it would have been a couple of years where they would bring in big speakers and. It cost thirty thousand um, dollars, doesn't it? What? You know? I don't, maybe for the good seats or something to go to all of them. I don't know. It's very expensive. Well, it's online for free on Facebook. Look really? it up. Uh, yeah, the Nantucket Project. Uh, maybe it's. Uh, I'll, I'll show you. And they have, um, and they talk, they have that Lutheran pastor, something bold, you know, she's got a lot of tattoos, this kind of weird thing, he's a very hip Lutheran pastor. And she talked about, as I talked to this, this wedding couple about, our, the primordial urge to worship together, to, to stand in awe together before the divine presence, whatever our, not, never an understanding of, but whatever our experiences of that at least. Our experience, I guess, leads to understanding. But a prim and she said, "Where is that need being met now? Not in our club systems, not, you know, not online. Online, you get to respond, you know, little clicks of things, and oh yes, I did something, I responded. But it's not the same as, and I know we're having trouble gathering now, people being safe and rightfully so. But it's it's in our it's our human nature to want to stand in awe together." Of in, in front of God, you know, in the midst of in, with, in God's presence, and uh, we'll get back to it more and more. I again feel blessed we're able to do it as virtually we're, we're connected to people in this way um, more than ever. And so, I, and it's uh, we're doing things live. We had a, a staff meeting yesterday, and we talked about do we need to like broad, you know, can some things too, you know, like record things. And we certainly we you know we, like today we'll we have a handful of people on with us live on Facebook. By tomorrow, another hundred people will watch it in, in the community or so or more, um, and which is such a gift to be connected, mm -hmm. uh, virtually at least, until we can be together. And again, we're, we're connected in this way more than we normally would be with the four or five of us sitting around the table only, you know? Uh, so, yeah. So I think this is a good, praise God. I bet that the tune to which this was sung was a very happy, mm -hmm. joyful. Yes, that's right. Because these are like these are lyrics, right? Yeah. These are yeah. not poems, but lyrics. Yeah. 
see, what do we have now? We have our gospel, which is Matthew 20, 1 through 16. Fairly long one, Marsha. You have to pace yourself. Matthew 20, 1 through 16. So this is, this is, of course, very familiar to us. I will tell Steve, my son went to graduate, he has his MBA from the University of Chicago, and he is a Chicago School Economics fan, and I think he would like this passage very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his family. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received an denarius. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received an denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder saying, these last worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who have become the burden of the day and uh, the scorching heat, borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. I'm sorry, I'm going to miss your sermon on this one, Mark. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I always had trouble with that one. But yeah. I guess everyone does. So yeah, the great reversal, <laughs> status reversal. And of course, if you're many, so many people on our island, and, and also in my previous parish, if you're a person of status already, you don't need. You don't want to be status reversal. It's not. It's not. It's not good news. <laughs> if you're used to being first, and if you think you've earned it or whatever, whether you've earned it or not, whether you, whether your granddaddy earned it, and you're living the dream or whatever, um, status reversal is a tough concept. But uh, it, I, I always well, love. Go ahead. It, it may not be meant to be taken literally, but I could think of. Like, let's say you booked a table in a really fancy and hard to get expensive restaurant on Nantucket. And then the. We tried to do that today, could not. <laughs> we, we did it yesterday at Nautilus and had to use a, one of the part owners to get in. Uh, um, give me that information because that's the and, first place to try. And Bond knows. Anyway, um, the point is that, all right, so. You've got the money and maybe the connections, and here you are in Nantucket, and you're eating the fancy dinner. But here comes the, the waiter and the busboy. And, and, and if you understand in your heart that the last will be first and the first will be last, all it needs is it's like God threw us in a hat and sort of shook us around. And to him, we all look alike. Mm -hmm. And to me, as a Christian, that waiter, a waitress, and that busboy better look just like me mm. in my heart for me to understand and to have a right attitude toward my fellow human beings. And then also there's this kind of whimsical uh, element to this, this story that I like, which means that you can, let's say you are fortunate enough materially to have a lot of money, that you can just take it and give it to a charity or a church mm. that means something to you. And, or, and it could be kind of wacky. Like this, the friends of mine in New York got me to, to interested in donating money to a charity that brings dogs into prison and has prisoners train them oh, to that's be a good, wonderful them. It's a good. wonderful that's, thing. That's good for the sweet. dogs, good for the prisoners, good for the blind people, whoever mm -hmm. get the dogs. Yes. But, but, 
but you could, you could, you know, you could say to me, well, that's a stupid You can't train thing cats, to, nothing. That's, you can't, that's you a silly, that's, cats that's train, train, train. You <laughs> could say, well, that's a silly <laughs> thing to give you money. Yeah. But you this thing it. says, to be like this, this yeah. landowner is a good thing because mm -hmm. you can just decide to be a good person. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry to well, create it's, a whole story. It's a, this, also, this one reminds me of the prodigal son. It's, it's the same yeah, it's thing. Got, and yes. The story of the prodigal son is something I love. I can, I can understand that. But with this one, it just seems sort of tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, I know um, my brother, when I first went, uh, I guess, maybe when I went up to Tucson, my, it must have been my first position out of seminary, he said, God is taking you out of your comfort zone. And so I, you know, I think life takes us out of our comfort mm -hmm. zone enough, mm -hmm. but, but also we can meet God there in a way sometimes that we don't That's what in our comfort that, zone. But yeah. that's what your bro brother said? Or brother Matthew, yes, yeah. yeah. Who lives on but the island, the, yeah. What did he say Apropos of, I mean, that I was that I was leaving New England, where I'd been most of my life, yeah. and being plopped out in the desert, uh -huh. this, in the Southwest, you know, and uh, and leaving business world too, because I was doing both, you know, for mm -hmm. the longest time, mm -hmm. and so I was leaving. God was taking me out of my comfort zone. So that was interesting. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Really interesting. Moved around a few places, and so of course, and then there's the issue of seniority, and you know, like. Like I've been in this church for thirty five years. You know, I see it on the island. I went to um, yeah, I went to his fundraiser a couple of years ago now, maybe a couple of comedians. One, um, the, the comedian Gluaki, who I, I very much like. I, I mean, I saw him that once. He was at Dreamland. I forget what the event was, but he was memorable. But another another comedian who played up the us versus them on the island. You know, we you know we were born here, so we're better than you, mm. and we're laborers. We're better than you, rich people. Where you know, you know, ridiculing people, opening up their summer homes—it was just horrible. And, yeah. and of course, as a fundraiser, where well, you want people to donate money, yeah. and the ones that have the money, he was he's biting the hand that feeds them for this fundraiser. And um, I was really offended by it. Uh, luckily, the comedian after him, Brian Gulaki, was very positive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. no offense to another comedian, but you know what? I don't think we don't need that on the island. There's a sense of I'm better than you. Oh, yeah. um, because I've been here longer than you. And well, they, love, they love to use that thing, you're a wash ashore. Yeah, wash ashore. And someone said, is fine, it, said it to my husband one time, and he had he had come here way after we were here. He yeah. just didn't know. Oh, one of our neighbors, we had a little, park, we had a little uh, parking lot dispute with a neighbor, and she said, we've been coming here since yeah, 2003. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, we've been here since 1901, the church. We've been here in the spot since I did it. So you have, you have, and I, and I should have thought more quickly in that moment, because I could have said, "Well, my mother's family came here in 1671. Their last name was Hussey. They were yeah. whalers, yes, Hussey, and Quakers. Yeah. And you know, I've got the Bible at home if you want to see it. Yeah. I've been here since 2003, so that gives me a right to abuse you and your and oh, your volunteers. Oh, I also hear people say, people say, I'm a cradle Episcopalian. Sorry, I'm not. I was brought up what on Ephesus. Yeah. Yeah. So who cares? You yeah. saw the light. You saw the light. Yeah. yeah. Now, and um, yeah, so we try to get, mm -hmm. avoid that. I, I love, again, that our, I'll say again, because I was asked to, for a quote today for the paper. I don't know what will, will print in the paper. You know, I know from previous experience in Delaware, if I use the word love, they think, I can't mean that. It must be live. I must have meant live. So they put live, and then it'll change the whole meaning of the of what I said, yeah, exactly. and so this one, um, I did say um, that we're not we're not a member fo focused church in that way. We're so used to visitors, so used to people coming and going, summer people, year round people. Some people that leave live in the summer, and they live you know they leave during the summer, but then they come back the rest of the year, mm -hmm. whatever, back and forth. And and it's not we're not members only focused. We've had this open table concept of welcoming everyone to communion. Because of that, I've had Hindu people at. I wanted funerals I knew because of the dot on their forehead, they came to communion. We had an Islamic family that we were a caregiver for an older gentleman that came to church. They came to communion. You know, beard, bearded men, and you know, it was, it was wonderful. And they, as I say, this is a sacred meal. 
And the Hindu people understood this is a sacred meal. They came up in reverence. Mm -hmm. They shared our sacraments together. Mm -hmm. And so St. Paul's has the commitment. Long before I arrived, they had this commitment, which is, is, new, is spread almost completely widely now among Episcopal churches. Some still have speak to old canons from the 70s, and that's mm -hmm. fine. But I love our commitment. That's a, that kind of, that, it's um, a living metaphor for mm -hmm. uh, being open-hearted people, I think, you know, open-hearted, caring people. Well, Hin Hindu people often are extremely welcoming to visitors who come. We came Very much so, as long as you take your shoes off. Oh, well, we did it. We went to this <laughs> one out in the middle of nowhere, um, Beverly and Bill, Bill. Lillian and I, we had to take shoes off. Oh, Beverly, I didn't realize that. Yeah, That's she great. went on our trip to India. So you must and be great photos somewhere. It's right. Somewhere and that trip. When we, as we came in, it's, you know when Russian Orthodox cross themselves, they go down the floor to this. Yeah. And he did something almost like that when we came in and we explained who we was. He was, they were so sweet to us. Yes. It just, it was amazing. Yes. And then they were thrilled because Obama was ru ru was running, and they wanted to hear all about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never mind. Just we don't want that. We don't want to seem to have a tri any traumatic, uh, what do you mean? post-traumatic post stress. He was our president. He was yeah. our president. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, it was fast. Yeah. Again, I always thought you know, growing up in a different Christian denomination, uh, and I guess I was a little judgmental. I thought Hindus, uh, we call them pagans. You know, they had yeah. multiple gods. Yeah. And so I was so blessed to be, I was appointed by the governor of Delaware to go to an interfaith partnership council. You know, we worked to you know, do things in the community together across, across uh, faith lines. And we went to the Hindu temple. And, then, and he said, no, no, Father Max, we believe in one God as you yeah. do. Yeah. But, but our mind wants to rest on an image. So we rest on this image of, of prosperity, which is a, you know, a woman, uh, you know, that was a very popular shrine at that temple. Mm -hmm. Our mind wants to rest on an image of fertility or prosperity yeah, or yeah, comfort. Exactly. And so there are different symbols for that. But well, they say, no, no, yeah. so we don't worship those symbols. We are, we're worshiping the deity, you know, the God. Yeah. God. And so anyway, so that was, so, you know, well, remember, that was interesting for me to experience that. When and not, Hindus greet each other, this meaning means, not, namaste means, the God in me recognizes the God. Yes, in I know, which I love that. So that's, yeah. that's, that means that spark of the divine in you recognizes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. No, I love that. So yeah, so that's um, and it'd be good if we get back to that. In the, especially in an election year, we should recognize that that divine spark in each other. And we say we need all of us to be the United States of America, not just one side. And we need all of us to be the body of Christ, and uh, and that of other faiths, we need all of us to be. Humanity. My, uh, my other advice Humanity. for the election year is America should take up a hobby. Yeah, I mean, like needlepoint. Anything, anything. We, we've become. I, I, I was I was talking to someone. I said, I'm a little, but I can remember elections. America should take up a hobby. And, and, yeah, I mean, really. People, I mean, Kennedy versus Nixon in 1960. I was a kid, but I remember it, and they were all excited, and 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 some people liked one, and some liked the other. And, yeah. And, and I liked Jack Kennedy, and he seemed very exciting. And I got out of kindergarten to see him go by in our neighborhood. Yeah, he drove but, by in a convertible. But back then, so people funny. didn't break off friendships. No, that's right, exactly. It's yeah. terrible. Yes, yes. I really think America should take up uh, golf or knitting or... or yeah, hobby together. I think out here would be needlepoint, like Steve. Men and women needlepoint. Needlepoint. And some could needlepoint little off. elephants, and some could needlepoint little donkeys. And no, 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 no <laughs> politics. Have a rainbow, and, some, some rainbow flag. And while and while they're doing the needlepoint, the TV has to be off. Off, right. right. Well, you in fact, right. the TV, yes. TV should My be off 24 does, hours a day. Does knit, she does? They both they did both do it, but they but they they start to do it often in Lizzie's class. She goes beautiful needlepoint because her husband wanted to watch sports and she couldn't stand watching sports, so she <laughs> had she had time to needlepoint. Yeah. Yeah. I know you see my, I don't, you can't see it on the camera, but I have a needlepoint belt from uh, Patsy Ernst. So Jack Russell Terrier is running around me, so it's meatball. Patsy Ernst. Meatball. Did, yeah. I mean, it must have taken she weeks. Did, she, I, she did one for me. I don't know if Patsy liked me, and she came in and said, She loves to do no, she liked meatball. Yeah. yeah. I guess she had an extra one. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, she loves to do the. She did I just one. Great, what a great. It's, I'm so touched by this gift. I'll have it forever. I, I told Ollie, bury me in this if I. Yeah. When the time comes. 
She right, because I guess I, I, time is, uh, to, uh, is running up, but I don't, I love this, and um, I'll, I can work with a scoffer, but it'll be, it's going to be a challenge. I just, it's a happy and whimsical process. Let me say two, me say two things. I really agree with Steve's point earlier that there's a lot of whimsy in this. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, uh, that when this was sat down by Matthew or whatever, they, they recognize the whimsy there. And I think the other thing is that understands to me is God is not answerable to me. I'm answerable to God. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the laborer in the vineyard doesn't tell the vineyard owner how he should be spending his money. He said he makes a deal. If you never make another deal with this guy again, then that's fine. But you've made a deal this time around, and you have to work out the terms of yeah. it, the terms that you've agreed to. So right. um, I think there's a lot here. My, yeah. way, my ways are not your ways. Right. Yeah, and, and again, also. Yeah, the, that last, I have a footnote, because I'm using the side of the revised standard. And um, in, the la in, the, in verse 15, uh, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me, or do you begrudge my generosity? My footnote says, or is your eye evil because I'm good? And um, that's interesting, you know. Uh, I, very, not my usual thing, but I think this is, has been a very interesting week. Yes. Yeah, and again, you know, again, I think we try to, um, we can try to judge how God judges people and things right. and let's leave it to let's leave it to God not tell God what to do mm -hmm. here's this prayer for social justice I think we could do that I guess right Lord be with you with our spirit. With our spirit. let us pray almighty God who created each of us in your own image grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil to make no peace with oppression and that we may reverently use our own freedom Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations for the glory of your holy name. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Okay, kids. We Another one in the can, as always says at night, and prayers in the <laughs> attic. And so we hope to have people join us then tonight, 8.30. Prayers from the attic. And tomorrow night we're going to have, I think we're going to have an evening prayer from the church tomorrow night. If you're able to, to come in, we're going to have an evening prayer. Maybe we could Zoom that too. We'll let you know. But certainly on Facebook, evening prayer from inside our beautiful church at St. Paul's, 830. Maybe I'll see you tonight. Okay, thanks for joining us.